Hi ladies, uh, today for 5 Minute Faith we are still in Isaiah 40. Today we're doing verse 13. Um, in the New King James, that verse says, Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him? Um, and the New Living Translation says, Who is able to advise the Spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? Um, I really, I've, I love this entire passage of Scripture because it talks to who God is and how he works, how big he is. And it helps us put into perspective who we're serving and why. Um, there's an element of almost like a warning or a caution in this verse that I think has a lot to do with um, our tendency to question God's motives, our tendency to question that God's paying attention. Um, and I think even though this verse is phrased in a way that culturally to us probably feels a little bit like a sarcasm, like, well, who's, you know, who knows enough to give God advice? Um, that is true in the sense that we should take that caution. I do think that we should ask ourselves the days that we're questioning God's motives or like, God, what are you doing? Why would you do that? Um, the answers to the God why questions are all there. He understands that we feel frightened or angry or uncertain. He understands that we're going to hit situations where he's working and feel uh, unnerved by them. That's why he gives us so many promises about his good intentions for us. Um, if you want references for that, um, Jeremiah 29, 11 is a good one. Um, also Romans 8. Um, there are so many promises that God gives us that his reasoning, his intention, his motive, his plan, it's all good. Um, and we also know that he knows everything and sees everything. So yes, when we read this verse, you know, who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? We do need to have a healthy amount of respect for the fact that God literally knows everything for all time. There is no such thing as a surprise to him. There's nothing that we can add to him or tell him that he doesn't already know. And we do need to keep that in perspective when we're questioning him. But also, I think there's a lot of reassurance in that. If we can learn to trust the promises that he gives us, um, the ones that talk to his good plans for us, working out everything to the good for those who love him, um, all, of those, all of those stated promises, if we can learn to trust those, when we hit a situation in life where we don't understand what's going on and we're looking at it going, oh God, what are you doing here? What is going on? That question becomes a seeking of advice or a seeking of information rather than an insistence or a demand that God's got it wrong this time. So here's what I would say to you. I understand um, that there are, especially if we're either new in our relationship with God or if we've been really hurt and we haven't found yet true intimacy with him, there are times when we're like, God, what are you doing? We don't know all the promises that he gives. We don't know whether we can trust his plan. We don't know whether he cares that something is hurting us. And if you're in that place, I would say, don't be frightened to let him know that's how you're feeling. I don't believe that this verse is a chastisement of people with genuine questions, either out of lack of knowledge of God or lack of experience with him or just, just a young faith. But if you're in a position where you know God, where he has proven himself to you and your life has grown and developed and your intimacy with him has grown and developed, I would take some warning from that. You know, we're big kids now and we need to ask ourselves when we have those moments of, of shakiness or fear, I think God understands that. I think that's why Christ said, God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He understands that we have these moments where we give in. And, and all we have to do is acknowledge them and repent and say, I, I know I shouldn't have questioned you. Um, 
but do take a moment today to think on both, I guess, the caution and the reassurance that comes from loving and knowing a God who literally knows everything, everything. He knows the things we don't even know to ask about. He knows the secret thoughts. He knows the secret intentions. He knows the future. He knows the truth of the past. You know, people get stuff wrong. Even with good intentions, people get things wrong. And people aren't always good intended. So I would say to you today, give thought to the fact that your God doesn't need advice. He doesn't need anybody to counsel him or give him warning of things. But that's a good thing. The God that you serve, the God that you're praying to, the God that you're asking for guidance, he has literally all the answers. So give that some thought today as you as you go about your day or your evening or what, whatever time of day it is for you. Chew on the idea that there's literally not an answer in existence that God doesn't know. And that that's the guy who promises to live inside you and advise you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.